You see, the devil cannot work without the representative principle. Uh, like God works through a church, through a body, representative, the corporeal principle. Similarly, the devil cannot work without empowering a system. So he empowers a world order and he empowers a religious order to fulfill his purposes. And he uses all the strength, power, ability he has to do that. Uh, and in, in that context, he gives his power, his throne, and his authority to the Roman Empire. Uh, and you can read this in Revelation chapter 17. Time will not permit. So when we talk about the ten horns of the Roman Empire, we are talking about the ten governors. There were ten governors ruling over ten imperial provinces. Like South Africa has nine provinces with nine premiers. The Roman Empire in, in, its, in its management of its empire, it had ten governors uh, ruling over its ten imperial provinces. And the seven heads speaks about uh, the seven line, lines of the Caesars, uh, the different emperors that ruled over, uh, over, over the Roman emp uh, Empire. Nero is one of the Caesars. Uh, so when we talk about the beast, we are talking about a, a world governmental system uh, ruled by Caesars. And in the time of the writing or the predicted writings that will take place by John, he was talking about the rule of Nero Caesar. Nero Caesar. Uh, the Caesars were, according to Roman ideological theology, the Caesars were regarded as gods. And Christians were persecuted because they refused to join the idolatrous Caesar cult. Christians will not bow their knee to anyone else but to the Lord Jesus Christ and his Father. They will not worship any god but God. The Jews, unfortunately, when they crucified Jesus, and you can read this in Romans chapter 19, unfortunately, the Jews changed their position and they violated the first two, uh, um, uh, the first two commandments of the Ten Commandments. The Jews were told that they must not worship any other god but God, and they must not bow their knee to any graven image. They must not create no worship, any graven image. But the Jews, when they were crucifying or asked for the crucifixion of Jesus, they said, then his blood will be upon us and we will subscribe to Caesar and to his rule. So they acknowledged that Caesar was God there. And part of the judgment upon Rome, uh, from, from, from the Roman Empire, that God used the Roman Empire to bring upon Israel, was to bring judgment to Israel because they rejected God. That's how the temple and the city of Israel was destroyed. Uh, the, the, the city of Jerusalem was destroyed in, in AD 68 to 70. I'm saying all of that, it's a lot to say, a lot to say in such a little time. That's why uh, when we see that Nero hated, Nero hated the Christians and, um, and um, he persecuted them. It was because they would not bow to him. And Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 refers to him as the man of sin because he demanded absolute obedience and he built a, 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 an image of himself, a 120 feet image of himself, and he expected the Jews to worship him as God in the temple. He was also known as the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, and later on, the Antichrist, the Antichrist. And that is why it was him. And the name Nero Caesar, Nero Caesar, uh, when you convert it by using you know, Hebrew letters, convert it to numbers, gave you a value of a person's name, a person's name. And his name, according to, according to the Hebrew uh, numerical value system, came to 600 
and 66. That's Neron, his full name was Neron Caesar. Neron Caesar. And he, um, he is regarded as the Antichrist, as the Antichrist. He is the mark of the beast. And in the days that he lived, he, he forced people to worship him. And without submission to him, without submission to his ways, he would not allow them to survive in his kingdom. If you did not subscribe to him, you would not survive. Now many of us live in, in compromised human societies, like in South Africa, there's a general tendency for people to say that if you are not connected, if you don't inculcate the culture of bribery and subservience, subserviency to corrupt officials within our governmental circles, you will never survive in South Africa as a business person. In other words, you have to become corrupt to be successful. Unfortunately, this was the culture in the days that we are talking about. So when the second beast emerges from the land uh, and is referred to as the false prophet, the Bible says that this beast will come to mislead people in the name of this world order. It's called, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and mislead many. So this system of religion was misleading people. It was misdirecting people. It was trying to bring people to worship a, a, a Caesar system, a Babylonian system, a Roman Empire that was antagonistic towards God. It was an apostate, abominable system of rule. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it uses delusion, subtlety, etc. Believe me when I tell you, if, if you read Josephus and other historians of the time, they will tell you how popular Nero was, how people loved Nero, how they supported Nero, and, um, and, uh, and the false religious system convinced people to bow their knee to the Roman Empire. So the false religious order has the appearance of a lamb, that's what Revelation 13 says, but was a ravenous, beastly system of religion. It is a wolf system in sheep's clothing. It was, it, it was a, a beast system who spoke like a, a dragon. So it looked like a lamb, but it was draconian in the way it spoke. It will teach you how to survive. It will teach you how to live by competing with the system, how by, by subscribing to the system. It will teach you how to become part of the system and you'll be surprised today at how much of our religious orders within the traditions of the Christian faith teach us how to survive in the beast system, how religion teaches you to sow to get, to, how to become a millionaire, how to be covetous, how to call things into existence, how to name it and claim it. This is a horrible system when religion teaches you how to violate the last covenant, uh, commandment of the Ten Commandments, which says, thou shalt not covet, and how religion will teach you on how to covet to become successful, how to be famous, how to be rich, how to, uh, you know, how to make money. Uh, I'm not, I'm not anti-prosperity. But God's way is totally different to man's way. We'll talk about that later on. So the false prophet uses deception, subtlety, seductive speech to draw people from the faith. But it is a tool of the world order. And this world order is governed by Satan himself. And the devil in this context is a liar, is a slanderer, and he's a blasphemer. And believe me when I tell you, there are so many half-truths in the church today, so many false teachings. Let me tell you something, a half-truth is not a full truth. Uh, a lie is a lie, no matter how it's dressed up. Uh, and there are so many teachings today on prosperity that does not come from God, on, on grace 
and free grace and that God loves me and I can do what I want and come as you are and the end will justify the means and we can do, you know, we, as long as souls are saved, how we have church doesn't matter. They window dress it to suit the appetite of a soulish man. Believe me, all of this is part of this false world religious system. That's the judgments that's coming upon the world today. And we have to become aware of it. So this false religious system will perform great miracles, signs, wonders. And you see how people run around all over Africa after false prophets, uh, uh, after delusional forms of religion, manifestations, uh, how we window dress our churches, etc. Uh, fire will even come down from, every, uh, from heaven and many will be deceived. Many will be deceived. Um, so the image of the beast, when we talk about the image of the beast or any image or any form of idolatry, it's an attempt to substitute for true religion. It's an attempt to substitute for what God has instituted as a faith that comes from him. Christians today must learn how not to bow to the physical and subtle delusional images that are out there. Be careful, be very careful. Uh, do not bow to the state, do not bow to worshiping your bodies, don't bow to worshiping nature, status, power, social and political systems, culture, race, uh, whatever images you've created, please be very careful. So when we talk about the, the mark and the, and the, uh, of the beast, it affects six categories of people, six categories of people. It affects small and great, rich, and poor, free and slave. Like the COVID-19 is affecting all people, this system will subdue all people. And you will be surprised to see how people have become slaves to state, slaves to a certain kind of traditional church that is anti-Christ, anti-Christ. Um, it's a system that will force you to receive a mark on your forehead or your right hand. In other words, it will indoctrinate you. It will stigmatize you. Forget about the chip now. Please forget about the chip. If there's a chip on your hand, you can take it out. But a mentality, an ideology, brainwashing, is very hard to remove. You'll be surprised. I see how people would like statements that are anti-South African government. Like, like a statement that speaks bad of our government. Do you know why? Because you're so affixed, so caught up, so consumed by an ideological view that is so politicized that sometimes we don't even know that we are prejudiced in what we like. Instead of learning how to stay pure and clean, not corrupted by all the stuff, no matter how rich or poor you are, sometimes our environment shapes our behavior and this thing will make you be shaped by your context. It's a system that will, that will cause you to become subordinate. It will make you a slave of rule. It will rob you of having fellowship with God and dependence upon God. This system, you will not survive unless you become, become a victim of it. So when we talk about 666, we're talking about total sub, 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 uh, subservience, submission to the governmental order of your day, to the ideologies of your day, to the paradigms of your day, to the mentality of your times. It means allegiance to the rule and law of Caesar. Um, and so this number came to represent Everything that is uh, uh, filled with apostasy, uh, serpentine function, and demonic rule. And the personification of this was Nero Caesar. And he put that mentality into people. 